What's up guys, my name is Andrew Sawares, and today we are going to be doing something that I, this is one of the most requested videos that I've, been, like, people wanted me to make. It'll, like, everyone has wanted me to make how to install Arch Linux, so this is going to be the Arch installation guide, or I'm not sure what I'm actually going to call it yet, but this is going to be how to install Arch Linux, and I'm going to do it very easily, I'm going to have it full-fledged, you're going to be able to start the first step to the last step, and have a installation of Arch Linux and a lot, I'm making this not only for the, the, the quest I've had to make it which means there is confusion on how to install Arch Linux and it is complicated I'm not gonna it's, I'm not, it's not like an easy like installation like Linux Mint or Ubuntu if you're not willing for the channel the challenge of doing this then I recommend going to a distribution like that but if you're willing if you're willing to do the challenge and that after the challenge is over the result is amazing and you can see my other videos of what my Arch Linux desktop looks like and what things you can do. It's very similar to other distributions, but it's just the steps and the whole process getting there. It, it makes you have a, a feeling of um, so, like accomplishment when you're done because like I built this from the ground up. So um, this is how I install Arch Linux. I'm gonna, I have the guide and we're going to work through that. And I, I want to help you guys be able to get the installation working because there is some complications that I've had personally and in other videos that are po fairly popular on how to install Arch Linux, they don't go into the things like what if you don't have network connection? What if you don't have a network connectivity? What if you can't set up your ne network connect connectivity? So we're going to go that through that in this video. So I'm not sure how many parts this is going to be. It's not going to be a one part video, that's for sure. I'm going to stretch it out because I want to give you the full experience of installing Arch Linux and I want you to be able to get it right and do it again because once you keep doing it, right? For the, my first time installing Arch Linux, I had no idea what I was doing. When I was trying my in my Linux distribution searching phase, when I was searching for every distribution and playing with them all, I went through Arch Linux like in very early. I was like, oh, Arch Linux, download it, burn to disk, put it inside, was met with the terminal. It's like, all right, bye, gotta go to somewhere else. And I went to Ubuntu Linux and I went to, I went to the rest. And then the last thing I tried again, I was like, all right, let me stop. Arch Linux looks amazing. I saw. Um, Chris from uh, uh, Jupiter Broadcasting, he finally did uh, Arch Linux, and I saw that, and that was the final straw. I was like, I need to know how to do this. So let's jump right into this, and let's get into installing Arch Linux. So as this boots up, i, I got to say that when you want to get Arch Linux, you to go to their website. I'll have it in the description below, and just download the ISO image, uh, either through a torrent or their uh, mirrors, and just move it, either put it on a USB drive or put it on a CD, burn it to a CD, and then attempt to boot. Um, I'm not really going to go into how to boot your system through uh, the BIOS. You can try to figure that out. There's other videos on do doing that. It's kind of complicated to record that and to kind of represent like the BIOS and trying to do all that stuff. So I'm not going to get really into that, but let's get right into doing this so the first thing when you're um, presented with this well, I'll clear this out and I'm gonna do this live I, I was gonna do this with like no clicking of the keyboard I was gonna voice over myself installing it but I feel like doing that you're not gonna be I'm not gonna be able to match what I'm talking about very, very easily I'm not gonna be able to keep my thoughts together because I'm gonna have to rush through it as I'm doing the installation pretty fast and I have to talk over it so we're gonna be doing this live you will hear the keyboard keyboard in the background so just that's just a warning if you don't like that you can try to find something else but um yeah so the first thing you want to do is try to see if you have internet connectivity which we'll do that right now and I do because I have Ethernet and this is in a virtual box so um, I will have internet connectivity through the virtual box and if I, I do recommend if you this is your first time installing Arch Linux do it in a virtual box environment do not mess with your hard drives or anything like that so as you can see here like I said before I have internet connectivity so for you if you have if you get the error unknown host or uh, yeah unknown host that means you don't have IP uh, uh, internet connectivity so the next command we'll type in is IP link and IP link will show you your 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 wireless and uh, Ethernet devices and shows you your network devices so as you can see here I have ENP OS 3 and that is my default Ethernet device for um, that's for virtual box but if you have a wireless card so if you, okay so to tell if your wireless card is supported under Arch Linux we'll type Wi-Fi menu obviously I do not have a wireless card for virtual box so nothing's gonna pop up here but in the situation that you have it you'll be presented with a blue screen and I'll put that on the screen now it's a blue screen and that will let you connect to your network and if, if it works then that means you have to do nothing else to set up your network if it doesn't and we do IP link again we'll do IP link again if you don't get anything, and you can look here, it says, if we look at, uh, direct your attention to ENP0S3, you see broadcast multicast up. It says it's up. In the situation that it's not, we, we can type in IP link set up 
and then you oh, there's my phone. Um, you can set up ENP3, ENPOS3. Since it's set up already, I won't do that to mess it up. But if you see it says down, that means that it's down, and that you have to set it up to make it get to, to make it work. Once you have your Ethernet or wireless set up, you're golden. Usually, you won't have any problems during the rest of the installation. All right, so next is going to be partitioning. We'll do LSBLK again, and you can see here I have SDA. That's the main, so it's SDA, so that's slash dev slash SDA. Next, I have the two other partitions. I've already installed Arch Linux on this uh, virtual box before, but we'll be removing those, and we'll see through that. So what I use is CF disk. Yeah, CF disk. And we'll do slash dev, so we'll slide in slash dev slash SDA depending on the name of your hard drive. You can, it's always slash dev, but the name, if you can see at the top, right below name is slash SDA. Sometimes it'll be slash DDD, um, it could be slash uh, SDC. It depends on the configuration of your hard drives in your computer, depending on the name. That will depend on, it will change the name depending on the configuration. So we'll do this, and then we'll be uh, presented with this. And this is a, uh, a screen to formatting partition. This is another place to be careful. This is the warning place. This is the dangerous place to be. Make sure you're mounting the right hard, make sure you're going into the right hard drive when you're in this page. Make sure that you have all other hard drives other than the one you want to install Arch Linux on disconnected. Please disconnect them. I don't want you to make a mistake and remove Windows or whatever else you have on the computer. And I highly recommend if this is your first installation, do it on a virtual box. Make sure you're not going to mess it up and just be careful when installing this. So with having, with that being said, let's continue. So as you can see here, I have two um, partitions here and we're going to remove these. Um, because they already have Arch Linux on them. And now you can see I have a 50 gigabyte um, partition, uh, hard drive now. So what, what rule of thumb I like to take is I usually make root bigger than home. Root is where your programs are going to be installed. So for me, I'm going to make the first partition is going to be root. And that's going to be 30 gigs. The next one, okay. So, okay. Um, if you're on a laptop and say you have... Now, this is kind of a gray area. Many people don't use swap anymore, but some people do. Swap is a piece of the hard drive that swaps uh, RAM, random access memory, to hard drive space. So it's a very small partition that will take small amounts of the RAM. So say if you have Google Chrome open or a program that's using high amounts of RAM and then it stops using the RAM, but it's still taking up that random access memory, swap will take all that data and store on the swap partition until it's needed again. So it frees up your RAM. Depending if you have a laptop, then you can make swap and to do that you usually rule of thumb is you double the amount of RAM you have so if you have two gigs of RAM you make four gigs of swap if you have three gigs of RAM you make six gigs of swap so to do that you would just type in two gigs four gigs actually so there you go and it, or, so note the name so anytime when you're doing this so making your brain a mental note that say okay SDA1 is root get a piece of paper out write it down so SDA1 is root SDA2 will be swap and then SDA3 is going to be root this is just for you though. I mean, SDA3 will be home, excuse me. Um, this is whatever part, whatever configuration you go by, the names will be different. Make sure you note that because a lot of the times you're not going to, the names will not be, di the names will have different uh, hard drive names. So SDA1 could be whatever you're setting it to. So this could be, this could be swap. This could be home. This could be root. It could, it's different for you. Make sure you note which one when we get to mounting and making the uh, EXT4 system because, um, that's another place where you can get confused. So right here we have the SDA1 for me is root, SDA2 for me is swap, and SDA3 for me is home. SDA2 is optional. You do not have to make a swap partition. So once we have this done, we can continue to the next step. So we'll make sure you don't hit quit because I hit quit multiple times by accident here. Um, let's hit right and we're going to type in yes. So this is another part where warning, make sure these are final changes. Make sure you're not on the wrong hard drive. Take a look at the name. Make sure, make sure, make sure don't lose your data. That's the one warning I have doing this on the main system. If you're on a virtual box, you're fine. If you're on a, a spare computer, you have no other hard drive other than the one you're installing Arch, you're good. So just saying. I will click yes, and that has been written. Written. So now we can do LSBLK. Okay. Now different dev SDA. So now we're looking at LSBLK okay directly to the dev slash SDA uh, hard drive. So now we can see we have SDA one, which is 30 gigs, that is root. We have the SDA two, which is swap, and then we have the 16 gig that is home. So next we'll be configuring the partition. So make this is making the partition table. 
So the command we're going to be using is mkfs.ext4 slash dev slash sda. So this command, before you enter it in, we're going to put the hard drive number for each of one of these. And I'm going to have a message here that says, do you want to continue? You're not going to have this message. It's just going to continue. This is because I had this part. It still remembers this partition as having a format. So we'll do that for that one. Continue and yes. And after this, we'll do the third one. And then we'll be all good with ext4 formatting. Now, ext4 is not really optional, but you could change it with another for a hard drive format, but I don't really go into that. There's other ways to do that, and that's separate. You can find Arch Linux guides to that, and I'm not really going to go into that part of it. But after that, we're going to activate swap. So swap, as you remember, we'll even go back and look, is going to be the SDA2 drive. So we're going to do mk swap slash dev slash SDA2. That's going to say that's setting up swap. And then we're going to do swap on. So swap on slash dev slash SDA2. And that's going to activate swap. swap. So now we have swap. And if we look here, it'll say the mount point is swap. So as we continue with this, we'll continue on now to mounting the specific hard drives for home, root, and everything else. So now here we're going to go take a look at your hard drives again to which ones you're using and make sure you remember the name, the, the, the ones you want to use for which. Uh, root, it tends to be the larger one as it is the one where all your programs are going to be installed. Home is your um, user, your uh, where your documents are, things like that. So I usually have that as a separate partition as well. That's optional as well. You can do different things with having a home and root. It's not separate together. It's, it's, it's a whole different, different thing for that. But um, So let's make our root. So we're going to do, now this is another important thing where you know which hard drive, which partition you want to make root. So for me, it's SDA1, the larger one, 30 gigabytes. So we're going to do SDA1 slash mount. So that's going to mount that. And now we're going to, that's now that's root. And we're now we're going to make directory for the home partition. So dash P slash mount slash boot. Oh, no, sorry. Home continue. And then right after that, we're going to mount. It. So mount slash dev slash SDA two. No, sorry. Three. See, you can make a mistake very, very easily slash mount slash home. So see if you're if I'm if I'm going too fast for anything, just go back. Uh, make sure that you're getting the commands. If you see, I I would even recommend pulling up the beginner's guide for our installing Arch Linux, so that you'll get the commands right off the guide. That's the first thing I did. I actually printed out the 30-page guide into doing this, so I'd get it right. So we'll do that. And now when we do, oh, oopsie, that could be a bad. Um, we'll do this, and now we can see that we've mounted each one of them. Now we have them as sla so slash mount is the first one, which is root. Then we have swap. Then we have home. So now that's all done. Now we can select a mirror. So selecting a mirror is kind of important, but not always. You don't have to always edit this, but we'll edit it anyway. Nano. So this is the command. Nano slash etc slash pacman dot d slash mirror list. And here are different mirrors. So these are the repositories that you will be downloading from updates and different things like that. And you can see here it has different um, areas. So if you say if you don't want it from France, you can comment that out. So it, it, depending on which one, which 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 country you're closer closer to. If you don't want US, you can block out US uh, um, servers, so you can just comment them out. Um, it's I don't really recommend editing this file. It, it, you could edit it if you want to edit the mirror list. You can uh, make a copy of it first, things like that. But I usually just leave this alone. I haven't actually had a problem with just leaving that alone. Um, and next, we'll be installing the base system. This is we'll be installing Arch Linux. During the installation of Arch Linux, you need an internet connection. That's why I stress it so much in the beginning to having network connectivity. So we'll do packstrap. Make sure I spelled that right. It's packstrap dash i slash mount base base dash devil and now we're going to be uh, grabbing all the packages of which are required by Arch Linux because the installation if you notice when you got the ISO image I'll make sure to have that in the description below as well for Arch Linux we'll hit all and all again and yes if you notice during the install when you first downloaded Arch Linux the CD is very small and that is because you're only getting a terminal 
there is no actual system. There's no um, everything is downloaded after all the drivers. Mostly everything is downloaded after. So right now we're downloading everything that's going to be building what Arch Linux is. And this is the main part of this. When you get to this part, you're halfway there. You're almost finished. Right after this is going to be generating a few uh, configuration files and then setting up your user and then finishing the installation. So right after this, you're pretty much installed and it's just setting up after that. So I'm going to let this uh, finish and once we finish, I'll cut right back.